I'll be showing nine new features in Microsoft Teams meetings. This includes dynamic view and presenter mode updates, inclusive and accessible features, whiteboard improvements, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature are new presenter modes in Teams meetings. So I'm here in my Teams meeting. I'm gonna go up and click on the share tray here, and you're gonna see new options for presenter mode. This allows me to superimpose myself over the content. And we've added reporter and side-by-side -side to the existing standout view. We also added customize. So I'm gonna click this, and this lets me customize the background during those presenter modes. A lot of options here. I'll scroll down. I've chosen the blackboard, so I'll keep that checked. I'm gonna click the back button, and now just choose the mode you want. I'll choose side-by-side -side first, so click there, and then just choose the window you want. So I'm gonna click here, and I'm gonna share my PowerPoint. Click right here. Now you can see that the PowerPoint window is shared and this little window here is only seen by the organizer so you can see exactly what you look like in this presenter mode. And you can minimize it if you want. But for this video, I'm gonna show this here only shows for me the organizer. Everyone else just sees the slide behind me. But now you can see I'm superimposed on the right-hand side of the content and my slide is on the left. This is that side-by-side -side mode. My team's background is behind me and you can see the blackboard is superimposed behind both pieces of content. Now, if I wanna change this view, I can hover in the top and you can see the team's sharing options comes down. Let's say I wanna hover here in this way, choose reporter mode and I'll show how it changes. So click this and now I'm superimposed a little bit bigger and you can see the content is still to the left of me and my team's background with the bricks disappeared and the blackboard is all that's there. So now I'm in reporter mode and that's the way it is. You have other options at the top as well, so I'll show those really quickly. Hover again and this time I'll choose stand up mode. This has already existed, so click here. Now I'm much smaller and I'm superimposed above the whole PowerPoint slide. And lastly, I can turn off all these presenter modes and just show my screen. I'll hover again and this time just choose content only. That preview disappears and this is just my PowerPoint slides ready to go. The second feature I'm going to show is the new updates to Dynamic View. Dynamic View is rolling out for education now. It's been delayed a couple months, so it's rolling out. The upper left, you can see the little drop down, so you can choose together mode, gallery, full screen. But we're going to show some new improvements to Dynamic View. So first, I'm going to share some content here in presenter mode. So I have my presentation here in PowerPoint Live. Now, one of the things we've allowed is spotlighting multiple people. So in this case, I'm gonna go down here and hit the three dot menu and I'm gonna choose spotlight and then confirm. So now you can see that Ann Cosma is in the spotlight where she always is because Ann's amazing. Now what you can also do is you can spotlight multiple people. So I'm gonna hit the three dot menu here and I'm gonna spotlight George. So you can add spotlight. So here we go and confirm. George and Ann are both spotlit. And the other folks, we have Gabby, Jerry, and Adam down below. They are in a smaller space. So this is a really great scenario for if you have a sign language interpreter. For example, you could pin the presenter. Let's say George is presenting and Ann might be the sign language interpreter. You can have a lot of flexibility in how you're gonna do your presentation. So I can have the content on the left and multiple people pinned on the right-hand side. And also with dynamic view in the upper left, I can switch here and I can say gallery at top and you have Anne and George pin in the upper left and all the other folks are on the right. And to unpin, I just hit the three dot menu and choose stop spotlighting. The third new feature are improvements to whiteboard in Teams meetings. So I'm gonna go here to the share tray and click this and now I'll go down and choose Microsoft whiteboard. My whiteboard opens and what you'll notice is there's a new icon on the toolbar which is add an image. So I'm going to click this and add a few images to the page. There are some of my Flipgrid friends. I can size the image. I'll add a couple more. You always need to add Cosmo on your whiteboard, especially with a beret. And hey, who wants to ask Mike anything at AMA? And now I can move these pictures all around the page and I can also highlight them. So I can click here on the highlighter. Hey, I don't want gray hair. I wanna give myself some blonde hair. You can do all the fun things that you normally do with a whiteboard. And now you have the ability to add these images and everything is collaborative. The fourth new feature is the fit to frame feature. So for example, our friend Adam Short Shorts right here is in New York City. He's in vertical mode because everyone in New York uses vertical mode because they're cool. 
But guess what? I want to get rid of those black bars next to Adam. So I can now hit the three dot menu and I can choose fill frame right here and watch what happens. Whoa, there's the extreme close up of Adam walking through New York City. He takes up the frame. I'm no longer distracted by the black bars next to Adam. I get the full on Adam short shorts wherever I want to go. And if I want to turn that off, I hit the three dot menu and I can undo it. And there's black to the black vertical bars. The fifth new feature is attendance improvements for Teams meetings. Now I'm gonna to go to a meeting that just took place here. I'm gonna hover and I'm gonna to choose to edit. Now after the meeting ends, you're gonna see this attendance tab. And just to note, your IT administrator has to enable the attendance feature and the link is in the description as well as on the screen to make sure they do that. But if they've enabled the attendance by default, I click on attendance here and there's this nice screen that shows how many attended. So we had six people in the meeting. We had the time and the duration and when each person joined that meeting and when they left the meeting. This is a really nice layout to be able to get a better sense of exactly who was in attendance and when. The sixth new feature is live caption languages added for Teams meetings. I'm gonna to go to the three dot menu here and I'm gonna turn on live captions. You can see along the bottom that live captions are coming in English. This has been something that's been supported for a little while. The new update is now I can change languages for the entire group. So what that means is, let's say I go down to the three dot menu in the lower right. I click this and say change spoken language. Let's say I'm in a meeting and everyone is speaking Norwegian. This is gonna change live captions for everyone. So to be really clear, when you change this, it changes live captions for everyone in that meeting. So it's not each person chooses their own, it is changing it for everyone. So I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna choose Norwegian. And when I click confirm, I'll speak in a little bit of Norwegian that I know, and that it's going to change along the bottom. So this is gonna change for everyone. Jeg snakker lidt norsk. Vi liker iskrem. Now at the top, notice that it says spoken language was set to Norwegian and that bubble appears for everyone in the meeting. So if I wanna change the language to Spanish, it'll change the language for live captions to everyone who's gonna be on this call. The seventh new feature is poll intelligence when you're creating these inside of Teams meetings with forms technology. So I'm gonna go here to a meeting I've set up and I'm gonna choose edit. Now we have the ability to add a forms app. So I'm gonna click plus here and let's choose forms. And this has existed already. Click save. Now it added the polls tab here, but here's the new parts. You get suggestions automatically, poll suggestions. So I could say, how are you feeling? How energized or what's the status of your current task? Let's do, how are you feeling today? I'm gonna to select this one and add poll to meeting. So now I've got this poll all ready to go. I could create new ones right here, click create new. And I have other suggestions here. So there's a whole bunch of different suggestions. Maybe I'll do, do you agree with this proposal as well? And this is similar technology that has already been shipped in Teams meetings with forms. Now you just get that automatic suggestion to speed it up and save yourself some time. So this looks pretty good. I'll click save. Now I have two different polls ready to launch in my meeting. The ninth new feature is brand new multiple choice quick quiz that's available inside of Teams meetings. So just like we created before, I'm gonna create new right here. And instead of a multiple choice poll, in this one, I'm gonna do multiple choice quiz. So I can do a quick quiz. This is great for education or in the enterprise environment, you wanna quiz people on what you've been talking about. So I'll select this here and I can give a couple of options. And so we'll say, what is Mike's favorite app? Oh, and automatically I get some suggestions. So I'll add a couple more here. We'll add an option, you know, Sway, Stream, Forms, Delve. So here are all the options about what my favorite app is. I'm only gonna allow one answer. And note, you gotta select what is the right answer. So I'm gonna say, you know, OneNote is my favorite app. That's the correct answer, but no one else knows that. Okay, let's save this. Great, and now I'm ready to launch this once I join the meeting. So let's go back into the meeting. Okay, we'll go back up and click the Forms button here. Scroll down and you can see what is Mike's favorite app. Let's launch that one. All right, my favorite app. I'll choose OneNote because I know that one. And I'll hit Submit. And you can see the little green check mark down here, that's the right one. But if then someone else guesses a different answer, it'll show up on the X.
The ninth and final new feature is Teams Meeting's LTI support for education integration. LTI is an open standard that many learning management systems use, and this lets you integrate Teams Meetings directly into your courses. And I'm going to show this with one of the world's most popular learning management systems, Canvas. Now, first off, I have a link here. The IT admin has to first enable the LTI app. I'm not going to show that in this video, but we have a page here, and it's very detailed. The link is on the screen. It's also below in the description, so make sure your IT admin for Canvas enables the LTI app first for your organization. But now, as an educator, we'll assume that the IT admin has enabled Teams meetings. First off, in the lower left, you're going to see settings. So as an educator, I've got a course ready to go here. I'll click settings at the bottom. Now I'm going to navigate over to integrations here, and you're going to see this Microsoft Sync. You can expand that to show what it is. This syncs the people in your class with the roster in Teams as well. And I'm going to flip this state to on. And it says the first time you run this, you need to click sync now. So this is going to get me all synced up. I'll click sync now. And so that's going to get going. I'm going to switch to a course that's already been set up to show exactly how this looks. So let's go back here. And I'm going to go into my software and engineering project course. Now this course has already been set up. And if you look on the left hand side here, lower left, there is this Microsoft Teams meetings. I'll click here. Now it asks me to sign into my Teams account. So assuming I already have Teams, I'm going to sign in quickly. Now I've signed into this new Teams meeting experience directly linked in Canvas. And I can schedule a meeting. So in the upper left, I'll click new meeting. We'll give it a title. Now I can add my attendees. I could click add the entire class because we did that sync. My entire class roster is here, but I'm just going to add a few specific attendees. And this is linked right into my Teams address book. And you can see the names pop up. And we're going to make this a repeating office hours meetings Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. And I could add the details, etc. And then I just send this out. We'll hit send. Now you see that my calendar as the educator is all set up. I can immediately join the meeting right here, which is super handy on any office hours days. I can edit the meeting if I need to, edit the occurrence or edit the series, and the three-dot menu gives me a few other options. So I can chat now, I can get the link, I can set the meeting options. All those types of things that you would get from normal Teams meetings are now integrated directly into your Canvas course. I can drop down here on the calendar and I can navigate to different days or different weeks really easily. And I can even go up to the three dot menu in the upper right and go directly to Teams and just launch there. This meeting's LTI app is supported in Blackboard as well. And we expect to have other learning management systems coming in the near future. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest videos I'll be releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell to keep notified for all the latest posts.